Welcome to MSA Prep. My name is Ms. McCants, and today we're going to be working on ECRs and selector responses. The first problem is Amanda's long distance telephone plan charges a monthly fee of $14.95 and five, si five cents per minute for the number of minutes, M, that she uses her telephone. The monthly charge for Amanda's long distance telephone plan is represented by the expression shown below. $14.95 plus five cents M. Step A, how much is the monthly charge for Amanda's long distance telephone plan if she talks for 150 minutes in one month? So I'm going to identify some things such as the total number of minutes that they're gonna charge her for, for the month, which is 150 minutes. So it says step B, use what you know about expressions to explain how you determine the monthly charge for Amanda's long distance cell phone plan Use words, numbers, and or symbols in your explanation. So I'm going to look at the first bullet. It's asking me to explain how we determine the monthly charge. So I'm going to first write down $14.95 plus the $0.05 cents that they're charging you plus the minutes. I'm going to substitute in um, 150 minutes for M. And I'm going to multiply that by the five min the five cents because when we don't have a operation here, we automatically know that we're multiplying. So five times zero, zero. Five times five, twenty-five. And five times one plus two is seven. I know that I have two decimal places, so I'm going to move my decimal over from the right over to the left twice. So they're going to charge her $7.50 plus the $14.95. So we're going to add that up. 0 plus 5 is zero, 5. 9 plus 5 is 14. Carry the 1. Bring down my decimal. 1 plus 4 is 5. 5 plus 7 is 12. Carry my one. One plus one is two. So they want to know her monthly charge. For step A, how much is the monthly charge for Amanda's long distance? She's being charged $22.45. All right, this will be considered my step B because remember, we can use numbers and symbols in our explanation. I will label this as minutes and I will label this as um, the charge per minute. Okay, so now I'm gonna move to my second bullet. This is bullet one. So I'm not gonna move to my second bullet. Suppose that the cost per minute changes to seven cents per minute. Explain how this will this change will exp, will affect the charge for Amanda's telephone plan. So, I'm going to do I'm going to use 150 minutes again. They did not change that in the ECR. So those are my minutes, and we're going to now multiply the minutes by seven cents instead of five cents. Zero times seven is zero. 7 times 5 is 35. 1 times 7 is 7 plus 3 is 10. And again, I'm going to move my decimal twice from the right to the left. And now we're going to be charged $10.50 instead of previously the $7.50. And I'm going to add $14.95 to that because that's our base charge. $14.95 plus $10.50. 5 carry my uh, 9 plus 5 is 4, carry 14 carry my 1, 1 plus 4 is 5, 1 plus 1 is 2. So now they're charging us $25.45. Now they asked how would the changes affect Amanda's telephone plan? 
I'm looking and I see that we have $22 for the first plan and $25 for the second plan. So it's going to change her plan by $3. There's a difference of $3 there. Let's show you. $25.45. From, and you're taking away $22.45. There's a $3 difference. So Amanda's plan... Amanda's plan has increased by three dollars because now they're charging her seven cents. Okay, all of this is a part of my step two. So I have my step A, $22.45. I have my step A, $22.45. I have my bullet one, and now I have my bullet two. So those uh, are all considered my answer because I use my numbers as well as my symbols and my words. Now I'm gonna move on to my second uh, question of the day, and it's a selected response. What is the total surface area in square inches of the rectangular, rectangular box shown below? And then they give us a note. The figure is not drawn a scale. So first, what is surface area? Surface area, I'm going to abbreviate, equals 2 times area of base. plus the lateral surface. Surface area. Okay, so now we need to find the area of the base. The area of the base equals the length times the width. So let's identify the length, width, and height of our um, box. Here is our length, so I'm just going to put L. 8 represents the width, and our height is 6 inches. So the area of the base is L times W. I'm going to plug in these numbers. 18 inches times 8 inches. I'm going to use a calculator. Eighteen times eight equals one hundred forty-four. Okay, so now we have our area of base. I'm going to now find our lateral surface area. Lateral surface area is made up of is made up of um, the perimeter. of base times height. So the perimeter of our, our base, that means we have to now decide what is considered our base. We have two lengths, which is 18 here and 18 here, and then we have two widths, eight here and eight here. So you should have four numbers to come up with your perimeter. 18, and remember perimeter is the sum of all sides. So 18 plus 18 plus eight, plus 8. Again, I'm going to go to the calculator. 18 plus 18 plus 8 plus 8 gives us 52. 52, and we identified our height as 6 inches. So it's 52 inches times 6 inches. And that gives us 312 inches squared. And don't forget up here, this is 144 inches squared. 
Okay, so now that we've found our area of base and we found our lateral surface, we're gonna multiply the um, area of base times two. So our area of base was 144 inches squared multiplied by two. And that's gonna give us 288. And now we need to add our lateral surface, which is 312. And that gives us an answer of 600 inches squared. And that will be letter choice C. Okay, our last problem for today is working with a coordinate plane. It says look at triangle LMN on the coordinate plane. So if I've identified LMN. Now, I've been trying to come up with a way to help you learn uh, how to do this with counterclockwise. Our question says, which coordinate plane shows triangle LMN after a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation about the origin? So counterclockwise means that we're gonna go in the opposite direction of a clock face. So we're gonna start at 12, and go in the opposite direction. I'm gonna label my coordinates. This is quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. I'm gonna label my coordinates. Try, uh, point L is at, if I'm on my zero axis at the origin, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna stay at zero for my X and I'm gonna go up how many? One, two, three, four for my Y. And that's L. And for M, I'm gonna start at my origin again. I'm gonna go over to the right, one, two, and I'm gonna go up, one, two. So my X is two and my Y is two. And the last um, point will be N. I'm gonna start at my origin. I'm gonna go over to the left, one, two, a negative two. And I'm gonna go up two, one, two. Okay, I've identified my ordered pairs and now I'm going to go in counterclockwise from the origin, 90 degrees. Here's a testing tip. You take your paper and you turn it 90 degrees. Now, once you've turned your paper, you can step, now use the same ordered pairs to come up with your new place on the coordinate plane. So I start at zero and I go up four. One, two, three, four. And that is L. That's my new position for L. And I'm gonna go here for M and count over to the right, two, one, two. And then I'm gonna go up two, one, two. Use a different color so you won't get confused. Okay, and that's my point M. And my last point, I'm gonna count over to the left, two places from my origin, one, two, and I'm gonna go up two, one, two. I'm now gonna connect my dots, L, M, N. We're gonna look for, we're gonna look for a answer that matches what we have here. Letter A. Letter A is over um, in our quadrant one and quadrant four. Our answer that we came up with is in quadrant two and quadrant three. So we know that A is not the answer. Looking at letter B, this answer is in quadrant 
three and quadrant four. Again, not where ours are. It is in um, quadrant two and quadrant three. That's not the answer. So I'm looking here, and this letter C looks very similar to what we have, but I'm not going to um, exactly go with this one yet. We're going to check out letter D. And letter D um, is in quadrant three and four. So again, that's not the answer. Letter C is our answer choice. It does match from here to here, just like the one we worked on together. I hope that this is helpful to you and check back in for other teachers to help you with MSA prep. Thank you.